have two different criteria, which makes things a little bit difficult. We have the WHO criteria uh, originating from somewhere in the 70s, and th those were made primarily to support epidemiological research because people wanted to see, is this thing really that innocent? So, and, and that criteria is neurological deficit originating from one vascular territory and with symptoms lasting less than 24 hours. Uh, and that is what we're working with in Europe in general. Then like, whew, like five, seven, eight years, something like that ago, some new criteria were published in the US based on the fact that we realized that often you can see in pe people with a uh, clinical tear, complete remission, at least to see for the neurologist within the first 24 hours, that they actually have a lesion, a DWI lesion, if you do an MRI scan. And so they set up a new criteria based, a tissue based criteria, which included that if there was a DWI lesion, then this was no longer a tear because then there was an infarction on the scan, so that a tear would be. Uh, neurological symptoms originating from one vascular territory, leaving no trace behind on the uh, MRI scan. Um, and this, this basically means that we end up with three groups of patients, those with infarction on the scan and symptoms lasting for more than 24 hours, those with infarction on the MRI and symptoms lasting, at least according to neurologists, shorter than 24 hours, and then those with symptoms lasting below 24 hours and nothing on the MRI scan. Um, this makes a lot of sense is about looking at what happens on imaging on testing especially for our doctors we love to see our clinical uh, impression the patient history confirmed by something that you can actually see and measure um, and in that way it's good um, but what is really complicated and that's still the same problem are those with no MRI signs because there is certainly evidence that these might have as poor a prognosis as those who do have a, a MRI a sign a DWI lesion. So at the end of the day, whatever you do, you will end up needing somebody clinically to work up these patients. You will need a stroke expert because it's also deleterious to receive secondary prevention for absolutely no reason. It's not, you know, it's, it's not just cakes you eat, I mean. I don't think that has ever really been evaluated, but it is certainly a support for, 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 for the physician. And we have to be aware that even very experienced stroke neurologists are in doubt. I've been working with stroke for 24 hour, uh, years and I'm not all the time, but regularly in doubt with these patients, is it really an, a tear or is it not? And in that way, you can be kind of supported by seeing or not seeing a DWI. It could also be an option for organization that if people do have a deficit, on the, a, a DWI deficit, then they do not have to be seen by an expert. I mean, that could be a consequence which would be good for resources and experts should only focus on those that do not have a lesion. So, but, but it certainly complicates matters.